MLB bets June 25th. Guys, yesterday, another winner. Guardians win 3-2. And we make it 3-0 in these videos. And we're currently with my VIP on a 10-0 MLB run. I hope this analysis has been helping. As always, guys, if it has been helping, if you guys have been learning, if you guys have been winning, please subscribe, like, and comment. Share it to buddies. Value-driven exchange. As we see more followers coming in, I'm going to start doing more of these videos, providing more value, more winners to you guys, and actually showing you guys my strategies, right? So, huge winner yesterday with the Guardians. Now, today we have another big lineup, guys. Very value-driven board that I'm excited to get into. Now, before I do start that, I wanted to show you guys uh, yesterday. So, my voice is a little bit raspy. I went to Game 7 yesterday, Panthers versus the Oilers. Hell of a game, guys. Hell of an experience. But if you guys know me, I don't really take hockey place as a matter of fact i haven't bet hockey all year nor do i send it to my clients because it's not the sport that i'm good at right but yesterday in the hype of the moment i'm going to show you guys right here as always this is my hard rock app currently sitting at twenty seven thousand six hundred ninety five. i went and took the panthers for five thousand dollars and won four thousand five hundred forty five dollars and here's my guardian ticket. now funny story as you guys see here me cashing out this was me going back and forth whether taking the play or not. Because I was going to the game. Obviously, when I go to games, I like to place a little wager on it. It was game seven. It was the hype. I went back and forth here in my apartment. But when I got to the game, I actually took the play. And we won. And won big. Now, for those of you guys that are on my VIP that are asking right now why I, I didn't send this play, I don't send hockey plays. I haven't ever. So I'm not going to send it to you guys because of my hype of the moment, right? I always play with discipline with you guys because I want to see you grow. I have a bigger bankroll. I can afford to bet $5,000 and so I did. So just wanted to share that information because you guys are seeing that cash out right here. Um, and now today, let's get to a big value driven board guys. As always, I'm gonna go over the first thing I look at every single day, which is the OBP. Every single day, last seven days I like to look at. And I'm gonna give you a key stat and a key factor to look into with OBP here in a bit when I analyze one of the games. Now, as you guys can see, Philly is leading the way. Pause. One big rule that I have this season, just to let you guys know, is I don't bet against the Phillies nor the Dodgers. I don't like to personally. I think those are teams that even if it seems like it's a sharp play, they're good enough to still win. And yesterday you saw it. Phillies dominated. I told you guys it was a game I wasn't going to touch, but I wouldn't lean towards the Phillies. But I don't bet against the Phillies, so I stayed away from that game. And they dominated, right? And today I feel like they're probably going to dominate again, even though the Tigers have their ace on the mound and the Cy Young probably winner um, in school ball. So let's get to it, right? I got Phillies, number one. We look at the bottom of the board. Kansas City doing bad. Pirates doing bad as well. Giants trending downwards. Braves trending downwards as well. Um, Marlins, as always, just trending downwards. So I'm going to go over two games before I go over the top four games that I'm going to look at and obviously place the bet right in front of you guys as I've been doing, right? So I'm not touching either of these games, but I just want to give you guys a little insight of what I'm seeing. Garrett Cole on the mound against David Peterson. The Mets have been trending upwards and they're home. Yankees, on the other hand, have been trending downwards. Garrett Cole is just coming back from an injury and you're seeing clear reverse line movement with all the support on the Yankees. Money and action is all coming in on the Yankees, as you guys can see right here, 87%, 88% on the money and handle and money line and run line, they're loop-sided, yet the line's pushing downward a little bit, which to me is a clear sign of reverse line movements. If a book is favoring a team that's actually having all the money and handle, the line's pushing upward, not downward. So a sketchy game, I'm staying away from it, just giving you guys my analysis, because I feel like Yankees is a game today where a lot of people are gonna jump on. Uh, Yankees are just a hot train, they're the team, everybody's team, and just because they're the Yankees and they got Judge and they got Soto, doesn't mean they're uh, uh, unbeatable, right? And the Mets are trending upwards, and David Peterson has been playing well, as you guys can see, 8-2 and two over the last uh, 10, while the Yankees, on the other hand, 3-7, and seven, right? So, if you're saying the Yankees think about it twice, I'd go with the Mets plus 1.5 on this game, uh, but that's just my opinion on it. Now, this game as well, Cincinnati Reds versus the Pirates. Pirates are in the bottom of OBP right now, and I told you guys I don't like taking teams that are in the bottom of OBP, but I do see a clear sign here of a trap. I think Mitch Keller is a great pitcher. Hunter Green is a great young stud with fast ball, but he loses control really fast. And if the Pirates can just sit tight on the plate and not strike out, they have a good chance of taking this game as underdogs. But again, I follow my rules, right? Just because I lean on something doesn't mean I'm going to take it if it doesn't follow my rules. My systems, my strategies, and my rules are in place for a reason. And that's why I only take one play a day, guys. One play a day. It's very easy for somebody to come into the show and give you guys four plays, break even two and two, and call it a day. I'm analyzing each game and picking the best one, which is a lot harder, in my opinion, to take one play rather than four and scatter it out. 
right? So two games, I'd lean for, uh, to the Pirates, um, and I would lean towards the Mets in this game. Two trappy games, in my opinion, but let's see what happens. Now, let's get to today's games that I'm analyzing. I'm going to go over the first one. Nationals at Padres, right? The line opened up at pretty much even for both sides, and with reason. You got Mackenzie Gore on the mound versus Adam Mazur, which he's young. He has not a lot of experience, and let's call it what it is. He's gotten hit pretty well. Earned runs 3-2, 8-1 over his last four. So it's a team that the Padres are home. They're facing a, a, a pitcher in Mackenzie Gore, lefty. He's been dealing well, even though we faded him last time out versus Arizona. And San Diego has a pitcher that's pretty much not their ace. Now, in my opinion, this is what people see. People are going to jump on Washington Nationals, and they do have the support because of Mackenzie Gore, and they see Adam Mazur pitching. Now, what happened in June 20th, which was last week when they played Milwaukee? Mazur played well against the Brewers. He only let up three runs in four innings, which is good as long as the Padres are putting up runs, which they should, right? I personally think that this is a game the Padres ultimately end up winning, yes, winning at home, and the books are lining it that way. In my opinion, the books probably should have lined up the Padres a little bit higher, sorry, the Nationals a little bit higher, but it's even, and I think they're trapping the crowd with the Nats as a value play as an underdog play they've been trending upwards they've been doing a lot better than most expected and just a little pause here and an ad here I think that the Nats are a team of the future they have a young core if they keep that young core they're going to be a team to watch out for in the next couple of years so Padres would be my play there I'm not taking this play personally there's a lot better value on the board but just wanted to touch on this game just to guys give you guys a heads up of what I'm looking at, right? It's easy to look at Mackenzie Gore against Mazur and think that the pitching matchup just favors Nats. The Nats have been doing a little bit better and to take the Nats away when the Padres are home. The Padres have been trending upward, guys, and I'm going to show you guys right here when you guys can look at this. San Diego Padres, they are 6-1 and one over the last seven or 5-1 and one over the last seven. When the Nats have been back and forth, there's a little trend between lost, win, lost, win, lost, win, lost meaning that they should win today, but I don't factor those little trends. So don't mean nothing, right? Padres have been trending upwards. They're the better team with the better hitters. Not with the better pitcher today, but as long as he can give up two to three runs only, I think the Padres have a good shot at taking this. So Padres would be my pick for this game. Now let's go on to game two. As you guys can see, I had the Padres favored a little bit more um, and the line's pretty much even. So Braves Cardinals. I'm staying away from this game, but I do see value in the Cardinals, guys. Again, as underdogs, I called it yesterday, and I think today's a good spot again to take them. Braves have been up and down. We saw them this weekend. They were trending upwards. Now they're trending ba backwards a bit. And as you can see in the OBP here, they're laying in the bottom half. Um, Atlanta Braves in 23rd spot. So they've been trending downwards. I think that injury in Acuna has really affected them. Um, but what's keeping me away from this game is that they lost yesterday. Reynaldo Lopez has been playing well, and along with that, the Braves have hit Gibson pretty well. So we can see that in matchupsmlb.com, Atlanta versus Gibson. My boy Olsen has four home runs on this guy. Four. Loren Loreno has two. Riley has one. They all have good hits. RBIs, Albies, Anderson. Loreno has six RBIs on this guy. Murphy, two. While on the other hand, Lopez has dealt the Cardinals. Now, the value, the line has been pushing down with all the support on the Braves, which is a clear reverse line movement. But in my opinion, after seeing the Braves lose yesterday, a prime team, a team that could still win it all, once healthy, I think so at least, um, it's a good bounce back, game for, bounce back game for them. And those are things that you got to analyze, right? With good teams, they typically bounce back. And looking at their last 10, every time the Braves have lost one, they have won the next one. So I think the value lies on the Cardinals, but I'm staying away from this game. If I were to take a play, I would take the Cardinals on it. But be aware of it, guys. Just because it looks like a value play, you guys got to look further into it and see exactly how the pitching matchups look. And Reynaldo Lopez has been one of their A's this season. He's been a big surprise. They signed him in the offseason, and he's been doing really well for them. So bounce back game for Braves. Bounce back game for Braves. It looks like a value play for the Cardinals, but I'm staying away. I like to find the best games of the day that, in my opinion, lay in these two that I'm about to talk about. Seattle Mariners at Tampa Bay Rays. Tampa Bay Rays have been trending upward. We talked about it in last week in the videos. They have been trending upward. They beat the Seattle Mariners yesterday. They've been playing better over the last 10, and they dominate the matchup versus the Mariners. Let me show you guys right here because this is something I factor in big time. How the teams have done head-to-head. -head. So looking at the head-to-head, -head, Tampa Bay has dominated, and most importantly, they've dominated at home. 
The last four at home versus Seattle Mariners, they've won, which is key. Tampa Bay has been playing better at home and probably has been for the past couple years. So something to factor in now, Castillo, ace, definitely regressed this year big time. He's He's been an ace for the past couple years, but he's trending downward in my opinion versus a team in Tampa Bay Rays that don't strike out a lot. They walk a lot. They hook, They hit good singles, good doubles. And there are teams that relies big times on just RBIs, not home runs, which in my opinion doesn't favor Castillo. Castillo's a strikeout pitcher. Um, and I think in my opinion today with Zach Little on the mound, yes, he struggled this season. But the last outing, two runs in five innings, he looked like his older self. He looked like last year's Zach Little. And the line, in my opinion, favors Tampa Bay. There's value in that at home. You're catching this line, Tampa Bay Rays. Let's pull it up right here. Tampa Bay Rays, you're catching them at plus 105, very similar to the Guardians yesterday. And as you guys have been noting, I like to take value plays. I like to take even money or plus money. I do take favorites. Do not get me wrong. I take them up to minus 160, minus 150. But if I find value on the board with the money I'm betting, I'll take that. Because for me, $3,000 at plus 105 wins me 3150 When I'm betting at minus 150, I'm winning $2,000. It's a $1,000 difference that in the long run factors into my decisions, right? ROI, return on investment. So raise, I find it very valuable today as a play. And then the last play that I'm going to go over is Cleveland at Baltimore. Called it yesterday with the Guardians. They were facing a lefty pitcher. They had plenty of opportunities to break that game apart and win like 6-2, but they didn't. But they still won 3-2. Their bullpen showed up. Their pitching showed up. And they have a very strong bullpen, guys. Very strong bullpen. Now, today, today Logan Allen versus Cole Irving. Now, something I want to show you guys so you guys start learning a little bit is when you look at OBP over the last seven days, you start looking at Baltimore Orioles top 10, right? And if you put it for the last 15 days, they are also in the top 12. So they're in the higher end of the OBP as they should be. Now, something that I want you guys to factor in when you guys are looking at OBP is to see if there was a blow up game that factored this position in the table of OBP. So what do I mean by that? There's games like you see right here, Baltimore's last 10. They scored 11 runs versus Houston when they lost 11-14. And then they scored 17 runs on the Yankees. Those two games, if you're looking at the last seven days, are going to push the Baltimore Orioles up over just two games, not 10 games, right? So something to factor in, right? Because when you're looking at these games and you look at OBP, Baltimore being as high as they are right now, you think that they're playing well. But the reality is they're not playing well. They're actually, um, they're, they're four and six over the last 10 right now and they've lost their last four and what's keeping them up in the OBP and RBI are those two games so something to factor in right because again most people think that just because they look at OBP they're playing well but factor these things in there's probably a blow up game or at least look into it now where am I leaning in this game I am leaning again with the Cleveland Guardians guys Baltimore struggling and I told you guys this last time out you have to have a, a little innate feeling, not innate feeling, right? You just got to study the game every morning and see what teams are trending upwards and what teams are trending downwards. And a big part of this game is catching that hot train. Cleveland, they're hot right now. We caught Braves last uh, on the weekend as well. They're on the hot train. Now, in baseball, it's a momentum-driven sport that goes up and down, up and down sometimes. So, Baltimore's trending downwards. They're facing another lefty pitcher that has done really well. Guardians have been hitting well. They hit lefties well. The matchups all around, let's pull them up really quick before I go place my bet for the game that I'm going to take. Um, the matchups, let's look at the matchups, pretty even as well, right? No pitcher has been hit by either team. Not big, at least. No home runs. If anything, Cleveland has hit Irving just a little bit more with Naylor, Ramirez, and Jimenez. They're top of the lineup. Now, where do I see value in today's play? I do like teams that are great, like I just spoke about the Braves, to bounce back. And Braves and the Baltimore Orioles are at home. So, like I told you guys, I don't always take underdogs. As a matter of fact, not always at all. I like to take favorites as well. And in today's plays, today's example, I'm actually going to go with the run line with the Guardians. A little bit bigger line, but that's okay. We've been winning, and as long as we're winning every day, that's all that matters. Some days it will be big underdogs, some days it will be favorites, but the goal ultimately is to win each day and win the week and the month. That's what makes a successful sports better. So as you guys can see right here, I'm in my app, uh, Hard Rock app, pulling on my tickets so you guys see them. Boom, exit it out. We got Guardians plus one and a half, four, 3,000, and again, guys, 
factor in what I told you guys. And as you guys can see, the, the bet has been placed. Factor in what I told you guys. When you see a team in the OBP, at the top of the board, see if there was a blow-up game, a game that they scored 18 runs, and you had two for the Baltimore Orioles. So that data can be a little off just because of those two games, and I like the Guardians to stay hot to at least lose by one, and I think it's value. There's a lot of value in taking that money line, but I'm taking them plus one and a half. Guys, as always, if you guys enjoyed the show, please, please share it, and before I let you guys go, I'm putting a screenshot right here of my player props for a game I went to the Marlins versus Seattle Friday night a couple days ago, and player props have been heating up big time and I actually opened up a chat for that uh for the player props where i'm posting them every day and they're winning so it's not something you need to buy all you need to do is sign up to chalkboard deposit using code af sports which i'll leave it in the description below send me a screenshot with that deposit and i'll add you to the group channel you'll start getting my player props every single day guys i've been starting to do it been heating up been testing it for the past 10 months and i'm finally ready to show it to you guys so you guys can start winning along with these winning picks now, that's pretty much it for today. Share the show, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll catch you guys tomorrow.